Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. As you can see from the title, today's video is the long-awaited Veruni Kenshin wig and makeup tutorial I've been promising. It only took me, what, three months to get it edited and posted? <laughs> Sorry to keep you guys waiting, my con schedule was crazy for a while there. And can we get a shout out for this inadvertent product placement? I should find out if Mountain Dew does sponsorships. But anyway, let's get into the video. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is styling the wig. Now I got Kenshin's volume entirely with heat. I use very little to no hairspray because the teasing method that I'm using doesn't require it. Now for this you will need a heat resistant wig. Uh, I, highly rec I highly recommend the one I'm using here which is uh, an Arda Wigs Jareth Long in the color dark copper red. Um, this is really great for abusing with heat and it really takes a tease well. Well, um, I actually redid this costume when I did specifically because they finally released this wig in this particular color. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going in at the roots with a crimping iron, just at the very roots, and then I go over the rest of the strand of hair with a straightening iron. And once I have the entire strand heated up, I'm going in with my teasing brush uh, to back comb it for volume. Now what this does is the heat makes the strands of hair more pliable because of course a synthetic wig is made of plastic. So when we heat up the strands, it makes it easier for them to bend. So that not only makes it easier to tease the strands, it allows you to tease it tighter and it makes that tease stay better. Um, and what I found is I can actually brush this wig out without having to redo all of my styling because the tease actually stays. Um, because what happens is when the, when the wig fibers cool in the crimped position, they're gonna retain that shape even if you brush it out. So they're gonna stay all kind of crimped up and kinked up at the roots and retain that volume. That also will make it easier if you do want to add even more volume later or if your wig deflates a little bit over time because since it already has that kinky texture, it's gonna be very easy to catch those fibers if you need to back comb it again. But yeah, I used very little, maybe even no hairspray in this wig. It's all just using the heat from my tools um, to heat up the strands. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going in and trimming up the bangs. Now I like to use two different sets of scissors for this. I use regular hair shears and I also use a pair of spinning shears that you can just get at Sally Beauty Supply. They look similar to regular scissors except they've got these weird little spacers in between. And what that does is it cuts um, sections of the hair but not the whole hair. So it gives you a really nice natural look. Um, it's great if you're going for um, something that looks grown out or a little bit piecey. And I'm just going through and getting it to the length that I like. Now, once I have the bangs to the length I want, I'm putting it on my head for two reasons. Number one, so I can adjust the ponytail, um, and also so I can figure out where my other sections are going to be and curl my bangs underneath. Because since I've cut the fibers shorter, they're straight right now, which means when I put it on the curved surface of my head, they just stick right out. So curling the bangs underneath is gonna give you a much nicer, more natural shape. It's gonna make your bangs shape like bangs made out of actual human hair would form to your head. And then when I've got everything to the shape that I want and got all my pieces sectioned off, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and put it back on the wig head to continue with the styling. I'm taking sections from the side and the back that are going to get trimmed shorter to add those little PC bits that Kenshin has. So I'm just going in um, and finding the wefts of the wig and separating out in between them because I, even though it's going to be kind of PC and messy, we still want the actual structure to be neat. And I don't want to be trimming pieces of random wefts and not others because it's going to be much neater and much nicer looking overall if I'm using the same wefts. 
And there's Bailey, of course, getting in my video because she has to be the center of attention, but um, she is cuter than what's happening here anyway, so I guess I'll allow it. Once I've got everything sectioned out, I'm taking a trash can to catch the fibers, as you can see, and I'm just going in um, and trimming everything to length. Now you can see here, I'm using an up and down motion with the scissors. And what that does is it allows me to cut through all of the fibers without having it very blunt cut. It keeps it very peasy and natural looking. I'm saying peasy way too much, but you know what I mean. Um, basically, you're you're running the scissors up and down the strand of hair so that each hair you cut, you're cutting at a different length. Um, and you can use the thinning shears to achieve this too, but um, for the most part, I just use the scissors, the regular hair scissors to cut it to length. You can also do what I'm doing here and just kind of cut down the strands if you want it to be a little bit layered. So what that's gonna do is cut the higher pieces shorter and the lower pieces a little bit longer. And then since I'm not undoing, but I'm flattening out the tees a little bit, I'm just going back in at the very roots in the, with my uh, with my hair dryer just to heat them up a little bit more and just redo that to use a little bit so I keep the volume. And then we repeat this process <laughs> over and over and over until we're happy with the length and the volume of everything. This is a really organic process. So it's not something where, you know, you need to cut everything exactly one particular way. You just want to do what looks right to you. Um, everyone's head is shaped differently and we're looking for different proportions, different um, styles. So figure out what looks good. I know cutting wigs can be scary. It never gets less scary, but um, just do your best. I believe in you. Now what I didn't show here is the process that I used to give the ponytail volume. It's basically the same as I use for teasing the rest of the wig. I take a crimping iron right at the roots um, and then a straightening iron over the length of it. Not the entire length, just what I want to tease. Um, and then just back comb it a section at a time. Um, I only do this right by the elastic. So this was why it was important to me to place the elastic where um, I wanted the ponytail to sit on my actual head because that way when I tease it, that tease is going to sit in the correct place. So I basically just teased right below the elastic to get a nice little bubble um, of, uh, of back combed hair there. Um, it just kind of flips it out a little bit so you have this nice voluminous base to the ponytail um, and then it gets narrower um, in that anime effect as you get closer to the ends. So here we are the morning of the convention. We're starting out with a bare face, just moisturizer. First step is gonna be primer, which here I'm using the Urban Decay Optical Illusion Primer just to go in and blur out my pore area a little bit. This is a silicone-based primer, but it doesn't feel as slippery as a lot that I've used, so I really like it for that reason. And then I'm going in with the Milk Hydro Grip Primer um, to add some hydration and a tacky surface everywhere else. Uh, I do put this a little bit over the areas that I use the optical illusion primer even though the silicone will prevent it from sinking in just for the tackiness. Now the L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear 24 Hour is a really great foundation for convention wear because it is going to last you all day. This one leaves a much more natural appearance to the skin than some of my other go-to convention foundations like the Maybelline Super Stay, which gives you a super airbrushed finish but kind of makes you look like a plastic doll. This one still leaves you looking much more skin-like which is great for the boy makeup I'm doing here. Now for concealer, my go-to is always and forever my Tarte Shape Tape. I love this stuff. It is super duper full coverage and it dries down really nice and matte. Um, I use it under my eyes and then a little bit through my T-zone and just anywhere that I need a little bit of additional concealing. I like blending my makeup in with just a damp beauty sponge, which this is the one I always use, my Beaky sponge off of Amazon, which you've probably heard me talk about in other videos. These are amazing. Um, I just blend that out over the top of my eyelids because that's also active as my eyelid primer. And then I'm just taking my Too Faced uh, Born This 
Swiss Wave powder just to loosely set everything. This is a really nice powder if you want a natural, not powdery finish. You can barely see it, but it does help to set your makeup a little bit. I'm just kind of dusting that a little bit all over the rest of my face just to make it easier to blend my other powders on top of it since I am going to be going in with contouring. For eyebrows, I'm going in with my NYX Lid Lingerie Palette. I'm just taking this reddish brownish shade um, and using that to define the shape of my eyebrows and the color. I like my eyebrows to match the wig somewhat, not an exact match. I typically do them a little bit darker because super bright eye eyebrows look silly, but I also don't want my hair to look like it's been dyed, if that makes sense. Um, so the red is going to be my primary color for the brows. And then once I've got the base shape down, I'm taking that slightly darker chocolatey brown just to add a little bit more to the tail because since my hair is sparser there, it gives the illusion of being um, a much brighter color, even though I've used the same color throughout, just because you don't have the other hairs blended in with it. And then just repeating that on the other brow. Um, I'm not doing anything crazy to change the shape of my brows here because I didn't particularly feel like blocking them out and my brows don't have too much of a natural arch to begin with. When doing boy brows, you do want the arch to be much more flat than if you're doing a girl brow just because the eye guy's eyebrows go more straight across. But because Kenshin is kind of a girly boy, I figured I don't really have to get away with anything too crazy. For eyes, I'm taking my Urban Decay Naked Basics palette. This is discontinued, but you can use any um, good neutral palette. I'm taking the shade WOS all over the lid just to add a little bit more coverage and cancel out any veins. And then I'm taking the shade here Naked 2, and I'm just sweeping that through the crease on a fluffy brush just to um, very diffusely define it and just add a little bit of contour there. And then I'm also sweeping that underneath the lower lash line just to add some definition to the bottom lashes. And then taking the slightly darker shade called Faint and using that to just define that outer V of the eye a little bit more. And just taking a big fluffy brush to blend everything out a little bit more so that it's nice and seamless. Now my NYX Retractable Liner is my favorite uh, gel or pencil style liner that I have. I like to use this to tight line my waterline, which as you can see uh, is not the easiest thing ever. It's kind of awkward, but it adds a really nice effect. And then my NYX Epic Ink Liner is my favorite liquid liner of all time. It has a really nice uh, brush tip, very similar to the Kat Von D liner. It's super black, it's water resistant, very easy to use. And I'm just doing a thin line and a little bitty baby wing, or at least that's my intention. You can see here, I'm. it's not cooperating with me today, but um, just like a little, uh, little definition to the lash line so that it doesn't look like, oh, we're wearing liner, but just some nice full lashes. And I just went back and forth until things were mostly even. And then once I've finally given up on getting my eyeliner any more even, I'm just going in with my Milk Makeup Kush Mascara, which is my favorite mascara of all time. It gives volume, it gives definition, it gives separation. You can layer it up without it getting spidery, but it's just a great all around mascara. Now I am hella pale and regular contour powders don't typically work on me because they pull too warm. So I'm actually going into contour with an eyeshadow from Essence. This is in the shade Movi Time. Um, you can get these little singles and just build your own palette and they're really, really great quality. Um, so I'm just taking that on a larger angled brush just to slightly define my cheekbones. Um, and then once I have a wash of the color on, I'm just taking a smaller, uh, more densely packed angle brush just to go in real close right underneath the cheekbone um, and add a little bit more definition um, going back with the fluffy brush to blend that out and then I am absolutely terrible at contouring so I typically end up going back over it with powder um, which is a great trick if you need to soften things and just blend it out a little bit more.
Now, part of the reason this video is so long coming is that I lost part of my footage, including the scar makeup. So we're here in my house, months later, refilming it for you. So first thing I do is I take this pencil from Catrice that is a very similar color to my skin, but just different enough to where I can see it. And I'm using that to map out where I want the scar to go. You really want to give yourself a guideline so that when you go in with the actual SFX makeup, um, you have something to follow. So this is Mirin Makeup Rigid Collodion. This is the star player of the game. So it's got a little nail polish applicator on it. And we're literally just going to take that and just draw over the line that we made with that pencil. And what's going to happen is as this liquid dries down, it actually shrinks and contracts and it causes the skin to shrink with it. So it creates a puckering effect where the scar is actually indented and it looks very, very realistic. So I'm just tracing over those guidelines that I set for myself and then letting it dry. And you can already see it starting to take shape. Now, I like to go in with a second layer, but you do want to be very careful because if you apply too much, it can cause some wrinkles that you don't really want. Um, it's not the ideal look. It's not awful either, but you'll see what I mean in a second here. So I'm just letting that second layer dry. And now when I smile, you can see right in the corner, it's just got some little wrinkles where the rigid collodion is a little bit too rigid basically and the skin's not adhering to it properly so once you've got it laid down and you're happy with it you just want to let it dry completely and then i like to take a lip marker this is an old one from covergirl that they probably don't even make anymore i'm sure it's long since expired but i'm using that to just draw over my lines to add some color to them and really make them pop the reason that i prefer something like this as opposed to a lip liner or liquid lipstick or anything like that is that it's just an ink so it's going to tint the skin without actually adding any substance so it looks very very realistic and with this one in particular it's very easy to just run my finger over the edges to blur and blend them out so that it gives a very very natural scar like effect like it really is just angry skin. So let's time skip back to the morning of the convention with my contour, blush, and bronzer done because that was also in the footage I lost. Um, so you can see here um, the same marker that I'm just using to go in and finish up the scar. Um, now, you may need to blend the edges out with a Q-tip a little bit um, like I did here. I went a little bit outside of the lines that I'd drawn for myself. So you can just go in and um, fix up any spots that you messed up. Um, and then I'm just going to throw on some lashes. These are from the brand Kiss, which is a really affordable drugstore brand. I don't have any real secret trick to putting on lashes. Unfortunately, I am far from the master. Just make sure that you're giving your glue plenty of time to try. It takes a while but um, once it gets tacky I just slap it right in the middle of my lid get the center adhered first and then I work my way toward the outer corner and then finally toward the inner corner um, it's hit or miss sometimes I can get them on the first go sometimes I can't it just depends on how dexterous I am that day but once you get the first one on then of course the trick is can you make the two sides symmetrical so just do the best you can it honestly gets a lot better with practice <laughs> So once your lashes are on, um, I'm going to take that Catrice pencil again. This is a slightly lighter shade, and I'm just using that to line my bottom waterline to give that nice big anime eye effect. I don't really like a white for this because um, it's just too stark. And then I'm going back in with the contour shade from that Catrice palette and a little pencil brush just to add a little bit more definition. So now all we have left is lips. I'm getting any stray foundation off and then just going in with this NYX Wonder Pencil in the light shade. This acts really great as a nude lip liner or um, a lip outliner if you need to conceal right outside your lips. So we're just blanking out the lips um, to give that just anime-like look. And then I'm taking this Wet n Wild Liquid Catsuit Gloss in the shade Kachu Bear Naked just to add a little bit of hydration back because my lips are hella dry. 
So with makeup completed, all that's left is to throw on the wig and costume. So I had to do very little touch up to the wig in the hotel room. Um, I may not have done any to it. The tees held really well. You can see the fluffy ponytail coming over the shoulder there. Um, and then this is how the whole thing looks together with the costume as well. I am super happy with how these revisions came out. I hope this tutorial was super helpful for you guys. If you do have any questions or if there's anything I forgot to mention, let me know in the comments or on social media. Love you guys.